All right. Um, Representative Bagley? Yes. Good afternoon. Do you know where my, what my question is? Uh, we've had this, this discussion before. Uh, the ICF's intermediate care facilities uh, since 2008 have had trouble. It's, they're struggling. Uh, as people have raised salaries, uh, the people at, uh, at the ARC and Holy Angels and others around the state have left. Uh, they don't have enough money to keep those people there. Uh, the people that reside in those communities, as you know, you've been there. In fact, I took you on a tour. Yeah. Uh, cannot live, cannot survive without people there to take care of them. Uh, they are the most vulnerable of the people that we have, citizens that we have. Uh, and and I've asked to increase that, or to get the 10.8 million that we need. Uh, I know you and I've talked before. It's when we know we got a billion dollars extra. 10.8 is what half a percent. Uh, but again, I'll, there there are ways around it. I know. So my question is, what are the uh, what, what's the chance that we're going to be able to address this uh, this problem we have? Well, this is the Appropriations Committee, and you all appropriate the funding for right. these types of priorities. So I would I would put that on you, sir. I think that they are important priorities that were initially in our budget. We're not funded in the executive budget because we have to think about all of the needs of the state. But every year we have asked for money for not only for ICFDDs, um, but I was talking to April about uh, ICF um, individuals who serve those in the community and also not just individuals with disabilities, but individuals who want to age at home. And the rates are, are really pitifully low and need to be addressed. There are um, several legislators who are leading conversations this session about this issue um, and, and it's certainly something that we are committed to in the long term fixing, but right now we are not funded to rebase these providers. Well, and we've had this discussion too. It, 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 when there have been attempts to fund through this committee, uh, those attempts were not worded correctly or to me it would look like the department would be wanting to get these things funded and rather look than looking for ways out which I, I hear that from the department. They ought to be trying to help ways to make it work. Uh, I can point to at least one for sure that uh, Ms. Reeves and I talked about in her office, in your office. Uh, you know, and I understand what you're saying is what the way it's supposed to work, but when we try to get legislation and money through and then there are ways that we say, well, we can't do it exactly that way. Well, why don't you restate it where we can get it? It's, it's like, we're hitting a, a, a brick wall. We're just not going to do it. Well, you've been a wonderful advocate for for the facility that we saw together. Obviously not, and, so because we're having well, this conversation but, still. But it is, <laughs> it is an important thing for us to discuss. I would say though that the the fact that the re that we have not recognized the surplus and the revenue has is impacting today the lives of individuals who get home and community based services. One of the things we had discussed was a workaround with the NOW fund, but until the revenue is recognized, we're not able to use that fund to rebase um, for home and community-based providers today. So that has been delayed by the discussions over the revenue and whether it will be recognized or not. So that's one thing we can do today to help alleviate, because many of these um, ICFs also have home and community-based services as part of the complement of what they provide. And so helping them there would also help relieve some of the budget pressures in other areas. So I would encourage you all to look at that. Well, and, and I'll say this, and, and everybody that's up here with me, uh, when I go, when I call the lady that runs one of those facilities, and she's telling me about the needs, and she starts crying over the phone, and talks about losing people, and she can't replace them, and what is she going to do? Uh, I'm not, I can't answer those questions. And I come to you, which there are a lot of people asking you for money, and, and you know the now waivers and all the others. I'm, I'm not against any of that. But these people cannot survive without those, those homes. Cannot. You've been there. You, you know, you're aware of all that. And all I'm asking is how can we expedite this where we don't have more reasons why we can't do it and some, some reasons why we can't. And I know everybody that sits here is in favor of, of increasing that money. Now, we just, some more than others probably, there are other, other issues. But I have for the last two years tried to get things through this committee that I've had trouble with that I could have worded differently and uh, you, we're, you and I are aware of all that. So I, I'm just wanting to know at this point what you're prepared to do to, to make this reality. 
We need to have an appropriation to rebase. So I think that's something that we can continue to discuss over the legislative session. But we're not prepared to cut, you know, the now fund or cut waiver services to provide a rebasing. Well, well you, so but we you mentioned that there are other things we could cut besides that. I mean, we always go after the people that are the most vulnerable here. I mean, there are other things that we could cut. We, there, we don't have to cut the ICFs and the now waiver people. There are other things. I mean, we, we and, and I'm not going to. I don't want to go into that, Dr. Gee. I'm not trying to cause you a problem. You, you and I, we've always gotten along well. I, I'm just frustrated to have to, to talk to these people in Shreveport, in my district, or in other people's district, and explain to them why we can't get this done. Because they're telling me, look, we, we, we don't want to close. One of them I know has lost a half million dollars already this year. They can't continue that. That's not going to happen. And that, so what's going to happen is they're going to close down and the state's going to have to take it over because they will, there won't be anybody uh, at, a, at a greater price. You, under, you know about that because you've been there and saw how they operate. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure. I, I need to give an answer. They're listening. They're watching now. I need to know what we're going to do. Is, is there an answer for this? Are we just going to continue to go another year with no answer and more reasons why we can't? Uh, I'm just frustrated, and you know I am. I, you know, we've had, you and I have had that conversation. Yes, sir. Well, all right, that's going to be all I've got. I don't want to elongate this any longer. Thank you. Yes, sir.